In this video, I'm going to try doing something different. This is a response to a question I got from another video where they were asking how I made sections of a template with the boxes that you could click on and have several of them in one screen. And what this is, is going to show how to make a structured data template rather than a free text template. I find that eClinical Works mentions this option a little bit, but unless the training has changed, they don't show it much. So I'm going to give an example here of some of my favorite templates. And I'm going to pull this one over for a UTI note, which I use almost every day in clinic. When I pull it over, we're just going to focus on the section of the HPI here. And you can see here some typical questions for your common UTI, but there are some things I need to change. This was billed as structured data, so all I have to do is click on this black text anywhere. And it pops up this screen, and you can see all of the questions are there in one screen. So I can quickly change it to, this happened yesterday, and they noticed blood in the urine, and it's severe, and they've taken some antibiotics. So when I hit OK, you can see it updates right here, and now those new changes are there. That's much more efficient than the free text way of doing it. If we were doing free text, we'd end up doing something like this. We'll go to UTI, and here's the regular symptoms. So you'd have to click on here. The patient's had it for today then click next and they've had these three and then click next and they've had these and next and so forth. And it's exceptionally slow to do it that way. And you can see it adds it down here below. It's much preferable to have everything on one screen and you can click away. And you'll notice that some sections, if I click one, it unclicks the other. For example, it wouldn't make sense to have multiple options for when this started, but it does make sense to have multiple clickable options for the symptoms because people are going to list different ones. And I've had some requests both on the videos on YouTube as well as at the user conference a couple of years ago on how to make these, so I thought I would show that today. First of all, I'm going to erase the ones that we've already put in here so we can start with a fresh HPI section. So we're back here with uh, blank HPI. In this case, I'm going to do one for an asthma exacerbation, which is one that I see a lot. And what I suggest before you do is figure out what section you're going to put it in. In this case, I'm going to put it in urgent care because I work in urgent care. And we actually already have a section for wheezing and asthma. Now when I click here, it's already got a bunch of options, but these are all free text ones, and I want to do the structured data. So to do that, I'm going to click on the custom button. If your custom button is grayed out, it means you don't have the security settings and you need to talk to your administrator about getting that enabled. The other thing is notice here on my right, I have just Windows Notepad open, and this has a rough template of what I think I'm going to add in the order I'm going to add it and with the options, and this helps you. Of course, you can edit an existing template, but this gives you somewhere to go. So I'm going to click Custom, and notice these entries here are the entries here, but we're going to add a new one. And that new one I'm going to call asthma exacerbation. I'm going to click OK, and notice here there's a structured box. Click here to make an X to make this one structured. Click the Save Structured flag and now hit OK. Now you can see there's another one below, and notice there's a little S. That means structured. Well, if we go click in there, there's nothing in there yet. We need to add this. Now, any of your users can access this part. However, for you to add content for them to use, you again have to have the custom tab, which this button should be active if you were able to do that last step of adding the asthma exacerbation section. So I'm going to click custom. And now we're going to add these different sections I have outlined on Notepad here. One challenge that you will discover is writing templates with free text, you have to pick a lot of the phrasing, and we've all seen templates that don't have very good phrasing in there, and they look like they were written by a robot. So a challenge here is a little bit of creative writing to make this sound like it was mostly written, or at least put together by a human. So we're going to start out with complaint number one, talking about what their complaint is. I'm going to add this, and here the name is what's actually going to show up on the HPI. So I'm going to write what my note says, which is, the patient's main complaints include, and I'm going to leave it like that, 
because that's the main stem of my sentence. In the type, I have to pick what I want. In this case, I'm going to have multiple options. I'm going to say coughing, shortness of breath, wheezing, and it could be more than one of those. So I'm going to pick structured text, and here I'm going to check multi-select. That means I could choose multiple options, which would be appropriate here. In the next section where we talk about when it started, I would not click multi-select because that doesn't make sense for when it started. There's only one answer there. There is this mandatory box. I would recommend that you not check it unless you train your users that they have to put an answer there. Because if you check mandatory and they get in here and they don't give an answer, they cannot get out. And it's very frustrating. So don't use that unless you have a good reason. Uh, trigger and default we will come back to later, but they're not as important on a structured text uh, data type. I'm going to click OK, and it's got the patient main complaints include. Well, now I need to choose the actual options. So I, I highlight it, and customized structured text appears, and here's where I want to put the options for them to choose. So I'm going to add three of them. I'm going to add coughing. I'm going to add shortness of breath and I'm going to add wheezing. Now you can add these to your heart's content and then you can uh, use these arrows up here to move the order up and down. I just put them in alphabetically and I'm going to put wheezing as the default, although you can actually have multiple answers default. Now we're going to go on to the next section and we're going to add another one, but slightly different. We're going to talk about when this started. So the symptoms started and there's my stem. And once again, I'm going to add structured text because it could be today or yesterday or whenever. I'm not going to do multi-select. I only want them to be able to choose one answer on this one. So again, I highlight it, choose my custom structured text, and I'm going to add a few in here. So we'll put today, yesterday, two to three days ago, four to six days ago, a week ago, and more than a week ago. Obviously, you can put whatever answers you want here uh, in whatever order you like. Uh, you can pick a default if you want to. You don't have to, but I'm going to pick one, and I'll show you a reason why you might want to do that a little bit later. So I'm going to say they've been having an asthma exacerbation since yesterday. And again, you can go back and change this if you decide you wanted something different later. Notice you can see so far with these two, this one says multi-select after it, this one doesn't. I'm going to try to quickly add a couple more options here. So associated symptoms include, and again, I'm adding stems so that when I later add my structured text, it sounds like mostly a complete sentence. So we'll add a couple here congestion or runny nose, fever, sore throat, sputum production, and hemoptysis. Notice I did these mostly in alphabetical order, except I put hemoptysis last. The reason I did that is I tend to put the less common ones down towards the bottom of the list, so I can look at the top and find the most likely ones. And I'm going to put that they've had some congestion and runny nose with their uh, asthma. And notice I clicked multi-select on that one as well. Let's do something a little bit different. Let's do one that's now more of a branching uh, option. So here we're gonna talk about medications they've taken. So medications taken include, and here's where I'm gonna put their albuterol or their Zopinex or their whatever. So I'm going to put Uh, Boolean. And in fact, I'm going to change this and say, have you taken any medications? Now, Boolean is a yes-no kind of thing. And in this case, I'm going to put, here I can choose a default, which is yes or no. In this case, I'm going to pick yes, because most people who have taken, or who are having an asthma attack, have taken something for it. I'm going to hit OK. Now, on the Boolean, I can click here, and notice there's a section called add child. So I'm going to add it and it's going to give me a subsection underneath here, which is medications include. And now here I'm going to list them and I'm going to multi-select them. 
Now, because this is a child node and it's going off a Boolean or yes, no, it has to decide, do you want this menu to pop up if the person answers yes or no? In this case, the answer is yes, because we're saying they've taken medications. So the trigger is yes. And notice this down here, here's the medications. I highlight it, I add the custom structured text. So I'm going to add a few in here, albuterol, leave albuterol, which is Zopinex, uh, steroid inhaler, and leukotriene inhibitor. And let's add oral steroids as well. Again, I know I'm doing them out of order because I'm doing it quickly, and oral steroids I put in the more severe category. I'm going to put albuterol for a default because most people have used albuterol if they're coming in with an asthma attack. Finally, I'm going to add a couple of different ones, and I'm going to say, when were you diagnosed with asthma? And here on the type, I'm going to put a, a date in this case, notice there's a couple of dates. You can just put a year or you can put a month and a year. Um, I'm just gonna put the year here. And when I click on this one, when we get to the, uh, the actual template that we're gonna use in the chart, it will pop up a little uh, calendar uh, that you can choose from. Let's also do one more just for completeness. How many medications do you take daily? And we'll just make this one uh, numeric. I should also point out on this one with when you're diagnosed with asthma, if we uh, update it, you can see here, there's actually three ways to put the date, which I think is a little bit overkill. This will just let you put the year. This will let you put the month and the year. Date will let you put the exact date. So if you know down to the day when they diagnosed it, like it was yesterday, I guess you could put that. I'm going to leave it just on the year. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And if I close right now, there's nothing in there yet. If I went to the patient's chart and decided, okay, I have my asthma template I want to use now, the harder way is I'd have to click on HPI and I have to scroll down to urgent care. Remember where I put it? It was in this one called wheezing asthma. Oh, there it is. Then I click on here and here's my options. Well, if I click the drop down here, yeah, I can click them, but then I have to go from one to one. And this is exactly what I didn't want to do. So instead, there's two ways around it. Number one, I can clear these like when I came in. If I hit the default for all, it will answer everything that I checked as default when I was making this. So that's one option. And now notice when I close it, it pulls in some of the answers. Notice not all of them are answered, and that's okay. But the even better way to do this is to answer one or two of the questions, more if you want, but answer one or two and save it as a template. Remember, save note as template right here. I talk about that in some other videos. So when you've saved the note as a template, you can pull it in. And when you pull it in, maybe you just get this little section and you haven't answered most of the questions and you're gonna have to update it for patient specific info anyway, that's fine. The goal is to be able to pull this in and have some black text because now you can click on it and there's your answers. I can change it, I can change my date, and notice this one, because I didn't make it multi-select, it chooses only one. Some of the others are multi-select because it makes sense they would have multiples. Have you taken any medications? Notice if I check no, that section just disappears. If I click yes, then it appears, and I can add a few other things. When we're diagnosed with asthma, when I click on it, this one, I can just type a date, this one where I said, how many medications do you take daily? I just did this as an example of the uh, numeric. Here you can click and it just lets you put in a date, 15, a little bit crazy. But the other th thing that people ask about with a structured data template is what if there's another medication which isn't here on the template because it's really unusual, it's a one-off? Well, you can still click in this section in free text, uh, loratadine and flonase. So I can put those in there. Now notice when I close, this section is going to update. And now there's my uh, 
updated information. I should also mention on the section about medications taken, it's right here where it says, have you taken any medications where it says yes or no? We did this with the add child section and we'll go back there. You can actually have sections that pop out for yes and different sections that pop out for no. So let's actually do that. So let's decide I need to go edit the structure a little bit more for my users. I'll go back here to the green. There's my custom. And let's go up here to, have you taken any medications? And we're going to add a child in this case. We're going to give the no answer, which is, I don't like medications. And I'm going to give some structured text. This one's going to be a little bit silly, but I just want to do it for an example. Now the trigger is going to be no. So when I answer, have you taken medications? If I click no, what I do here will appear. If I click yes, the medications includes appears. So now let's go add, I don't like medications. And we'll add in here, I don't trust doctors. I don't trust big pharma. I like to suffer. So yes, I'm being sarcastic here, I realize. So I'm going to close this. We'll close this as well, and we'll get back to our template. And now just to see how this works, when I click in here, let's go down. Have you taken any medications? No, I don't like doctors. Or yes, I've taken albuterol and steroid. The way Booleans work, uh, it's either yes or no. So if you answer yes, you get this option. If you answer no, then you get the other option. And you can see it right there. The other thing you can do with uh, Booleans is you can actually add multiples. So notice, we'll go back here to the custom section and notice there's these multiple sections. You can actually add more. So have you taken any medications? Let's go here, let's add another child. And we'll say, did it help? So this one I'm gonna answer as well, yes as well. So when I say, have you taken any medications? And they say, yes, it's gonna list the medications included. And then I'm going to ask, did it help? And this is going to be a yes, no. So I'm actually going to make it Boolean again. And I'm going to make the default to be yes, because I hope it helped. Oh, and it caught me there, my trigger. So it needs to know when the person answers yes or no on the parent to know when it triggers. So the, when the person answers yes, that's when it will trigger this one. So let's close it. We're almost there. Let's take a look. So on my section showing the Booleans, have you taken any medications? No, I don't trust doctors. Well, let's suppose he actually does. They click yes, and there's our answers. I've taken albuterol and a steroid inhaler. And look, there's another one. Did it help? Yes. And this yes, no came from making this child section a Boolean. So you can reorder these to your heart's content. You can add different sections. And truthfully, it will take some experimenting when I write these, I usually try to uh, have it written with a stem and then the answers you can choose. So it sounds mostly like a sentence that a real human would really say. Yes, there's a few of these that say, did it help? Yes, did it help? No. Uh, so that's a little bit uh, awkward or a change in style, but I haven't found a better way to do that. You can certainly experiment with that. Hopefully that's helpful. If it doesn't make sense or if you need clarification, please leave me a message. Uh, down below in the comments section.